Hey guys, welcome back to our third video in our conflict theory series. This time we're going to be talking about an Italian sociologist, Antonio Gramsci, and his focus on cultural hegemony. So from last video, Stephen Lukes's uh, Three Dimensions of Power, we saw cultural hegemony, the control of people's beliefs and therefore their desires, was that third dimension. Gramsci, uh, so Lukes kind of assembled his uh, his three dimensions of power from thinking about what other theorists had talked about and kind of uh, collected them and organized them into this three-dimensional model. Um, Gramsci was just writing about cultural hegemony, but he was writing about it 50 or so years earlier when he was actually thrown in prison by Benito Mussolini in the 1920s. It's a really tragic story. It's probably the... Uh, if I'm, I don't remember a story that's more tragic. Um, so Gramsci was a communist in Italy when the fascists rose to power. Um, Gramsci was uh, not like a, a Soviet type of communist. Um, he was a communist who saw capitalism as being detrimental to people's fulfillment, kind of like Marx, and um, and of course fascism is also is also not. Um, helpful toward people's fulfillment. So he was uh, in opposition to uh, to Mussolini's rise and landed himself in prison. And in fact, he was put in prison very specifically because how brilliant and persuasive he was. The uh, This is a quote from the from the uh, fascist prosecutor who, who uh, was prosecuting Gramsci and wanting him thrown in jail. He said, we must stop his brain from working for 20 years. So, which sucks because that's absolute, well, that's not what happened, but he ends up in prison for 11 years and he dies basically uh, almost, ex almost as soon as he gets out because his digestive system stopped working. He had headaches so painful that he banged his head against the, <coughs> excuse me, the side of his cell wall. Um, just a tragic story, and but while he was in prison, his mind didn't stop working. He thought a lot about the question of why do the powerless consent to being dominated? He was very interested in that because he's in prison and there are a whole bunch of powerless people who were kind of going along with Mussolini's fascist rise. Um, so he writes this series of, of uh, well, he writes what are called the prison notebooks. He basically works the entire 11 years that he's in prison. Um, so let me scroll down. That's kind of my intro on Gramsci. Again, tragic and horrible story. He's interested in this question of why the powerless consent to being dominated. And his answer is cultural hegemony. Um, he said that the powerful control culture so that the temporary victory that, you know, because remember, conflict theory says all victories are temporary. But the idea behind cultural hegemony from Gramsci's perspective is that that make that temporary victory seem like just the natural order of things so that people take for granted that this is how we are supposed to live, even though they are being dominated. So this idea of consent to domination is not even necessarily an awareness that you're being dominated. It's just, well, this is just how things are. Um, he was very interested in this idea of common sense, which is a, kind of a funny sociological term. Um, it's not a term that we normally think of as, as a sociological term. We think of it as kind of a, a, I don't know if it's a personal, I mean, it's, I guess it's probably not exactly personal, but something that, that, is beneath the level of elite kind of control. It's just, well, that's just how things are. That's what he meant by common sense. But he was interested in the fact that cultural hegemony is experienced by us as common sense. Um, he said common sense is uh, common sense is good for getting through your everyday life. Um, but it prevents people from understanding the overarching ways in which they are they are being dominated. Um, he said it embrace the com common sense is the embrace of the status quo. Um, for example, uh, it's common sense now. If if you ever did badly in a class in high school, or you had a friend who failed a class in high school, it's common sense for us to say that the person failed that class 
because they probably didn't do the things they needed to do. And that, that makes sense, right? In an everyday, day-to-day -day life type of way, that common sense explanation makes a ton of sense. But what Gramsci says is common sense prevents us from seeing the overarching institutional domination. What would be seen in terms of, uh, of the overarching institutional domination that would lead to a student failing a class is not that they, not that they didn't do the things that they should have done, but also it's really unnatural to put human beings into buildings for eight to 12 hours a day and, um, and have them sitting still and have them expect for that to be a, a reasonable way in which they would learn. It makes sense that people would revolt against that. And I mean, you probably remember being bored in class and daydreaming and it's because that's not a natural situation for us. What Gramsci would say is, you know who it's, who that situation benefits? It's not the students, it's capitalist corporations. He's a communist, but so of course it's that. But if you think about it, school can be looked at as this way of getting people into the economy, but it also can be looked at as free daycare. Um, parents can send their kids to school. They don't have to pay for it if they're sending them to a public school, which means they're getting daycare for free, which means they don't have to demand higher wages from the capitalist corporations that they work for. Public education system can be seen from that perspective as as uh, allowing capitalism to exploit people even more. So that's an example of how our common sense understanding kind of blinds us to the overarching um, larger institutional reality in which we are dominated. Um, all right, that's it for this idea of common sense. The last point is that hegemony is always at risk of destabilization. So. Um, Gramsci didn't think it's as simple as we are brainwashed and therefore we're never going to see the truth. He said there's a continuous tension between two things. First of all, the what he calls natural solidarity of people who are in the same circumstances. Uh, he says just being in the same circumstances with people, you know, having similar jobs, having similar position in the socioeconomic order, um, being relatively unpowerful, there's this natural solidarity that forms. That is in tension with these dominant class, uh, ruling class ideas that form cultural hegemony. So we are told to believe this, but our experience and the experience of other people is in I think my hands are in conflict with each other, are in conflict with each other. We've got my, this is my experience based on my life, but this is the ideas that we're getting about, about how the world is supposed to work. This is cultural hegemony, and these two things don't always get along well. There's always the risk that my experience is going to finally get me to see, you know what, these beliefs that I have don't make any sense. They're not helping me to have a decent life or a fulfilling life. So he says hegemony is always at risk of being destabilized. And when that happens, unsurprisingly, we fall back on the other two dimensions. We fall back on the mobilization of bias where certain ideas are excluded from the agenda. And what is included in the agenda is basically there to kind of make people feel like they have some power and like they have their their demands are being heard but the ones that are really threatening to the uh the system of domination those ones never get aired remember mobilization of bias is control of the agenda and when all else fails we um the the uh dominating party the dominating interest groups can always resort to violence uh, as uh, an overt power, which is that first dimension. Okay, that is it for Gramsci. Um, just at about 10 minutes. In the, and that I believe is going to be, well, I'm not going to say where I 
think we're going. Only the next video is going to take us in a very different dimension than these than these first three dimensions. Um, very different direction than the first three dimensions. Um, it is going to involve. Uh, it's going to involve some Soviet era um, uses of power that have been imported into America in the 21st century. I think you'll find these things really interesting. So I'll see you in that video.